Hello there and welcome back to part two. In this part, we're going to be making the actual platform controller. So we're just going to get started with this. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to, I've got a go.project folder. I'm just going to call this um, simple platform game. And to create a folder for that and click create and edit. Now we're in here, I'm going to create a 2D uh, scene. Um, so I'll just click on this create root node for this 2D scene. And uh, just immediately going to rename that one as game. It's going to be my top level node. And we're going to create the player as a child of that. So um, for the player, what we need is I'm um, just going to create a child of the game. Um, what we need is the uh, kinematic body. So the kinematic body 2D is going to be the main sort of um, action part of my player. So I'm going to create that. On top of that, we're going to need the uh, the visual, the actual sprite itself. So I'm just going to choose a static sprite for now. And um, with a static sprite, sprite um, the texture we're just going to set to the standard go dot icon because then we don't need to have any extra assets just so we can get this working. And as a child of the kinematic body 2D, um, we're going to add another child. We need the collision shape um, as well. So we're going to have a collision shape 2D click create and we need to set that shape to um, let's do the uh, capsule shape 2d and you'll see if we zoom just in um, this just about works so I'm just going to make it a little bit uh, bigger maybe squish it down just so that it kind of approximates the shape of my character looks more like a sphere but um, if this was a an actual sprite it would you would get this to fit you can have a a rectangle or any other shape that you want and that's our player i'm just going to quickly rename this as um, player and i might actually use uh, lowercase and uh, when i've got the player i want to make sure that i can't accidentally select the children so i'm going to tick this little box over here to make sure that the children are unselectable and that's my player i'm going to zoom out a little bit i'm just going to um, select my player here and just move them into the middle I'm going to create myself a platform because it wouldn't be a platform game without platforms. So for this one, um, I'm going to use a static body. Um, so if I can spell a static. Um, so the static body 2D, um, this is pretty much the same as the player. This is going to need um, a child node, which will be my sprite. Um, just select a sprite. And again, I'll just use this um, go.robot for the thing that we can see and we're also going to need a child node which is the uh, collision shape uh, 2d and this time just make this one into a rectangle because that kind of fits um the collision shape we're just going to try and match this up as best we can and then um what i might do to make this this bigger um actually i'll leave it as it is i'll just call this platform i could put um lots of platforms around uh, on my scene so that we've got something to uh, move about on um, and again with the platform just make sure we can select the children and what I'm going to do is uh, just use the scale tool I think just to make it bigger for now just make it a touch bigger and squish it down and uh, and then just oops back to there and I'll do and then just back to move the move tool here and just move it underneath my player and now we're ready to kind of uh, start on the code but before I start coding, let's just make sure that we've saved this um, scene. So um, I control S and save this as game. And uh, then we get started. So if we want to look at the kinematic body 2D, you can hold control and click on that. And you can see some of the information about kinematic 2D. And um, the key one here is the move and slide. And um, we want to be able to um, move it around. We'll use this one for the platform controller. So I'm just going to go back in here. I'm going to start um, with the, uh, the physics process. So if we say func underscore and then find the um, physics process, we're going to run all of our movements inside of this. Um, in order to do it, we need some um, input actions. So in a project, then project settings, um, just change to the input map here. I'm going to create a few actions that we're going to use. So I want to have a right, I want to have a left, and I want to have a jump. Um, so they're all lowercase, and I'm going to set these up for specific keys. So um, on the right I'm going to press the plus and say key and I'm going to use the D for right for left I'm going to press key again and this time it's going to be the A and for jump 
I'm going to choose a key, which is the spacebar. So these actions are now set up, and I should be able to read them inside this um, physics process. So I'm going to just uh, create a variable at the top that's going to store my velocity. So um, create a variable called velocity and make it equal to um, a vector 2 and initialize that to just a zero value. What we're going to do is we're going to have the input change this value. So I'm just going to say uh, velocity.x, so that's the, the right and left, is equal to um, the input from those um, actions. So we'll say input um, get access, and this is a new one inside of um, code 3.4. And what we need, if we hover over this, this get access, we take a negative and then a positive. So I think we're going to need the uh, left is the negative one, the negative axis, and then the positive axis is uh, right. So um, that gives me, it should give me a value between negative one and one, and we'll set that to the velocity. And we're just going to um, also multiply that by something, otherwise it's going to not move very much. We're going to use this um, move and uh, move and slide. Uh, I'm going to use uh, velocity as the velocity we're going to move, and uh, that needs to be a vector two. And uh, we just need um, vector two dot up to tell it what the up direction is um, as well, so that we uh, can be able to check whether we're on the ground uh, based on the angle of the thing that we're standing on. Um, if we run this right now, uh, we're running the scene, we should be able to move right and left, um, and we're moving right and left at a pretty good speed too. Uh, next step is to put some gravity in there. So for gravity, let's just store this uh, value that we want as uh, gravity as a constant. Um, by convention, we should use uh, gravity. We should use all caps. And I'm going to make that something like a thousand. Uh, we can change this later on. Um, in order to apply the gravity, all we really need to do is to um, basically make the y component of the velocity go um, up by gravity. Um, and we do this every frame. So I'm just going to say velocity dot y. I'm going to say plus equals gravity um, times delta. So that will be an acceleration downwards. Um, if we run this, we should see that the uh, player falls down. Um, and we have already managed to get gravity. So all we really need now to implement is the um, jumping. So uh, it's pretty simple. Um, all we need to do is, we'll do this after the move and slide, um, and I'll tell you why later. We just need a simple if statement, and we're just going to check to find that action. So we'll say, um, is is um, action action just pressed? So that's, in other words, if we just pressed this, this last frame. Um, if we press the jump action, then we want to say that we're going to jump. So we're going to say velocity uh, dot y is uh, equal to, um, I don't know, like minus 200, uh, something like that. And then if we test this, we'll see that we're able to move uh, right and left and we're able to jump. And uh, we don't jump very high on this occasion. But the one big issue here is that I can continually spam because we're not actually checking to see if we're on the ground when we move. So let's just do that. And this is really, really super easy to do because um, we've just moved. Um, what we need to do is we need to do a secondary check. So we'll say if we um, have pressed jump and we are on the ground and you do this um, is on it's on floor. So just by doing this, it allows us to make sure that we are um, when we move right and left. Um, so I can move right and left, and I can jump, and I can notice that this time I can only jump while I'm on the ground. The one last final issue is that you'll see that as we fall off the edge, the acceleration hasn't been zeroed out. So um, the longer you're standing still, the more gravity is applied uh, constantly. And the way to fix this is super easy. And I love the way that it's done inside of Godot. So all we basically say is um, we just say that the velocity, uh, if I can spell, uh, velocity equals, because we get a return value back from move and slide when there's any collisions, it actually gives you a return value of what the velocity is. And that is it. It's incredibly simple. If we just test this now, we'll see that we're able to move right and left and jump. And when we fall off the side, we accelerate properly as if we've um, only just fallen off the side. Um, in order to be a better programmer, what we really should do is we really should um, remove some of these hard coded values. So this value right here was um, how much uh, speed we were going to move by. So that's the right and left. And if I make this an export var, uh, and we'll call this um, speed, 
um, then when I do that, it becomes visible inside of the uh, player over here. So I'm able to change this inside of the uh, player component rather than have to go back to code every time. Um, so we'll say we now that we've changed this to speed, I just use the variable here. And we also probably want to say this um, jump speed as well. So this is a, a minus value. So I'm just going to do another export var and I'm going to say jump speed. And I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger because that was definitely too small. And then we'll just say um, minus jump speed. And one last test just to make sure everything works correctly. So we've got right and left and we've got jump. Um, so that's the absolute basics. Um, it's incredibly simple. I love how simple Godot makes this and it's just a bulletproof character controller that we can build on and uh, super easy to do. And we'll get into the next video tutorial series with um, collecting coins and all the rest of that stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed it and stick with the series.